next stock that I was mainly focused on, I was mainly focused on this, and I was mainly focused on PLTR. Those were the two that I was mainly talking about when the market was opening up with Fausto on this trade. Now, again, I mapped out a bunch of different lines here really briefly. Uh, first and foremost, any blue, any like light blue is just an iceberg level. 850, nine bucks, 950, 10, hey. So those are just like icebergs, 50 cent levels, whole numbers. And then otherwise from level four, you know, if there was an iceberg at a specific price level, well, in that case, you want to plot that too. Well, actually really quick, before I show my level four folks, hmm, that's kind of new. I didn't show that on the other stock. I mean, this is blue. So I just said blue is an iceberg. But it's dashed? What does that mean? Well, remember what I talked about earlier with NVAX and, you know, that iceberg that got pulled at 960 and how at the time that was still, you know, a fairly good level until 950 became the more prominent just going into the open. So, really briefly. Now, we happen to see some lines out there, some orange lines that stretch across the page, like 950-ish uh, right there. That stands out. There's one here that actually got pulled. There's one here at 935 that stays out there for a little while before the market opened up. Is there a dark orange line, red line perhaps out there? And what price would that be at, folks? Look across the whole heat map page. Is there any dark beat red line, and roughly at what price is that at? I guess if I'm asking what price it's at, the answer to the first question, is there one, would be yes. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, what price is that beat red line that you see is at? Sam, Sydney, like kind of like around that 865-ish, right? 867-ish, right? Like just in that area. Um, now that's a beat red line, first and foremost. Now when I see that, that means it's the largest order out there across the whole pre-market, like on the heat map there. So that was as many, that was as many, I'm going to make this easy to see here, as many as 305,329 shares. Now, Palantir came off earnings yesterday afternoon, right? So they made this big pop yesterday in the post-market. Uh, they were still a big in pre-market this morning, percentage-wise. But, you know, they gapped down, actually, from the after hours a small bit, like off the highs then, and dropping off a little bit there at the time in pre-market. But, folks, if you see how dark red this line is and you saw how many shares that was there, and, you know, hey, even though that order got pulled, that order was there for, you know, nearly an hour. You know, that's a fairly lengthable amount of time. So with that, I feel like there has to be a reason that that order is there. Now, if there's like some real big funny business going on and like this order pops up at some other price and then that price, uh, that order gets pulled and it's placed elsewhere and then again and again, if there's like crazy funny business going on, then I wouldn't trust it. But when I look at this, it's like that was there, it got pulled and that was like kind of it, right? Like that, that was all. So... It's kind of interesting, right? It's kind of interesting, right? So, on this trade, I will tell you at first, I took a loss on this trade initially because I didn't necessarily expect for this to become the bottom at that point right out the gate. I, I had that as a recognized level on my chart, but at first, you know, I have a couple other lines here. Iceberg, tinier one that was out there at 880. Uh, not as big as the 300,000. Uh, this was a chart level, a chart level. That's all, not like big money, but you know, hey, a couple of these purple here were just a, a good old chart level. That's all from like the last few days, from the after hours, maybe even the day before. So, uh, you know, that could have been a strong level to watch this area. 
So at first, I took a trade on 500 shares, half position size at 883. I got out at 7, uh, 876. That was basically a 30-second trade in and out at like 934. But to me, afterwards, obviously, it kept dropping, right? And at this stage, I say to myself, well, if it's not going to hold there, then let's give this next level a shot. And I did something that I normally don't do here. I did not wait for it to break under and back over. I ended up jumping in on this trade right away off of the price 869. And then I added a little bit more at 866 as it pulled back. So I, it could be easy to say that I got filled there, but it's all based on the lines that I had set up in pre-market. I set these up before the market opened. We talk about this each and every week here in Traders Talk, right? If you have your levels prepped, if you know where the big money is trading, it's like having the answers to the test before the test is given out. Now, you know, hey, if that's the case, then why am I not a 100% trader then? Well, hey, emotions are on the line still, and we're not controlling the stocks that we trade. We could only control the positions that we manage ourselves. So the 1,000 shares I eventually jumped in on here off of like 869, 866 price, well, I set a tight stop right under this level. You know, if it broke under that level, I would have taken another loss, and I would have been a little negative on the day then probably at that point. I was up a tiny cushion in pre-market, but otherwise I would have wiped that all out probably at that point. Easy to say that I caught this one. There were other trades that we called out after the open that I didn't catch. Uh, there was one that Fausto called out TCRX. I actually wrote it down on my notepad before 9.30. That popped. That made a hell of a move. I didn't take a single trade on that. My hands were occupied. I was f my hands were full here at the PLTR and especially the NVAX as that was running up. Now, though, one more time, folks. When a stock is breaking through a big level, let's just say when you enter a trade, let's just simplify it down to this now. When you enter a trade, given that it's off a big level, what are we expecting shortly after again, folks? Just generally speaking, generally speaking, what are we expecting shortly after? A big move. A big move. It's the same phrase every time there, Sam. So there's no difference. Now, I hope the stock rises. I, I hope it does. But I'm not guaranteeing it. I'm all but guaranteeing a big move. So that's what I'm telling you. Like, yeah, I'm setting my stop tight. Because if this keeps crashing, like, hey, it came off good earnings, but this might be a pop and drop, might be a gap fill. Possible. We've seen that happen in the past. So cross your T's, dot your I's, make sure your stops are set tight. But have faith in your level. If you're expecting a big move shortly after and the time is 9.40 in the morning, the, cur the time that I got filled was 9.37.58 and 9.38.01. Like I had orders out there, so pretty much within seconds they got filled. So with saying that, well, hey, we got a lot of time till reversal time on this one as well, right? I know it's easy to say that NVAX ran up, this has no affiliation with NVAX. They're two separate different stocks, folks. So I know they were both up big in pre-market, but they were coming off their own news. You know, they make their own separate moves. But it's just to say that if you're following what we preach each and every week here, then you're not going to end up like making like that dinky two cent profit and then the stock explodes without you. I mean, hey, is it possible that I could have shaved off some profit here at like 880, 884, expecting that to turn into resistance? Yeah. And hey, if I did that at the time, I would have been content. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Maybe you take half out and keep half in, expecting that bigger move over time. Well, it's just to say I held on to this one the whole way through. And with that, on the PLTR trade, I ended up clocking out on this. It was off of it was off the first exit was at eight ninety-two. And then the second half I ended up holding on more so. I closed out that one at nine forty-five. The price now is at the time 10, 31, 22 seconds. So, you know, the more it goes up and up and up here, I mean, hey, once it blasted above nine, I thought, all right, well, hey, there's a good chance to see this try and run up higher to the next resistance. I could have gotten out and shaved off more profit here, but I was very content with the profits I had on NVAX. And hey, if I took a smaller profit at the end of the day, is that bad? 
Should I feel negative about that? Should I feel down? No, I'm making money. So I've already retained a really good profit on NVAX. I've taken some money out on this trade already. So with the remaining shares that I had, I said, the hell with this. Let's hold on the whole way through because, you know, hey, it's 10.10 in the morning. We got a little bit more time left. Not too much time left, though. And otherwise, Fausto was saying it himself. He was blessing it here with saying that, man, this was on a very good trend at the time. And it was moving up maybe a little bit sharper across these minutes. But generally, I was kind of eyeballing the just the, the trend it was basically on. I didn't have these lines up there. But, you know, that's what I was essentially watching. And the more it goes up, then you say, okay, well, it should look to hold at the next one then, right? If it's going to keep breaking above these lines here, then our next ones are right up top here at 950 and at 953. So I clocked out at 945. I took the remaining profit there. All right. Ryan was asking, what was your entry price? I had covered that before, Ryan. Just we were saying earlier, a few minutes ago, at the price 866 and at 869, I got filled on my position right here. I took a small loss at first. I was in from 883 out of 876 on a loss. And then I jumped in on full size here. Uh, I clocked half out at 892 when it popped up and shook around. And then the rest of the trade I held the whole way through. Become a Cyber Group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.